All right, hello everybody. Um, we we're talking about dreams and it's uh, pretty amazing that I get to talk about my dream because I'm actually able to live it out and I'm, I'm doing my dream, which is, it's just baffling to me that I am where I wanna be and I thank uh, God every day for that. So I'm gonna start from the beginning of where my dream started and how I got to where I am today. Um, when I was maybe 12 or 13 years old, I always knew that I wanted to help people. Um, and my mom is a nurse, so she took me to work with her. Um, and she worked in the pediatric intensive care unit with uh, the kiddos. And so I went to work with her and I just loved it. I loved nursing, I loved helping. And so from that moment on, I knew that I at least wanted to be a nurse. Um, and so, I wanted to get my hands on anything I could that was healthcare related, healthcare involved. Um, so that's when, when I was in middle school, I became a candy striper at UVA, um, volunteering every four summers um, throughout high school. Um, and I remember just looking at this huge white castle, being like, man, I'm gonna work there one day. Um, and as a nurse, like I'm going to drive up and park here one day and I'm going to walk in there and I'm going to be a nurse. Um, and I just always, sometimes I just humble myself and go back to that moment. Um, when I pull in to work and I'm tired or, you know, the fourth shift and I just remind myself of me younger way back when just so excited to be able to just work there as a nurse one day. Um, so I volunteered for those four summers and also got my EMT, which is an emergency medical technician, a first responder, um, when I was about 17 years old, baby, so still in high school. Um, and we worked some pretty bad car accidents where we had to call in um, Pegasus, which is a flight, um, basically a flight ambulance, um, flight crew comes in and picks up the patient and flies them to um, UVA or whatever hospital um, is available at the time. And um, I just, I fell in love. I wanted to do that because I thought they were just incredible. You know, you're in the back of the ambulance and you have a sick patient and you need help and those doors open and there's that flight crew and you just are like, oh, I can breathe. We've got help. Um, so I always aspired to be that, and um, so I, I worked through, I got my EMT, I went to nursing school to become a nurse, and my goal was to work in an ICU to get experience before going to be a flight nurse, because um, I wanted to be the best that I could be. And I did, I went to the medical ICU, and I worked there for about seven years. Um, and I learned so much and I, I really did love it there. It was actually hard for me to leave and I almost kind of didn't pursue my dream because I just, I loved it in that unit so much. Um, but uh, I guess God called to me and told me it was time to do something different. And so I was going to, and I interviewed with the neonatal ICU, little babies, cause I wanted to have experience with, um, all age groups because the medical ICU is mainly adults and when you fly and you do critical care you do all ages so I wanted to have more experience so I went there and they they would have hired me but not for the same pay that I was making now so then I decided not to take the job and I think it was God's way of nudging me in the, the direction that I've always wanted to be um, to go in uh, because when I opened up the application or the jobs page, Pegasus Flight Nurse popped up. And so um, I remember talking to Pastor April about it, and um, we prayed a lot. I remember the church praying for me, especially when, because the interview process for a flight nurse is very grueling. And so I was very nervous about it. Um, I, I was like, you know what, I'll just apply. There's nothing wrong with doing that and um, just go from there. Like at least I'll learn about the interview process if I don't get it and I can always try again later. And so I went and I applied my interview. You, um, it's a multiple step. You have to teach the crew about a topic. It's called a teach back. Um, 
you have to uh, be interviewed by the peers, called peer interview, and then um, you have to pass, there's a test that they, they give you that you have to take, and then there's a clinical scenario as well. So they're just giving you different scenarios and you have to kind of think on your feet as to what you would do in those scenarios. Um, and so it's <laughs> very, uh, I was just very nervous about it, especially performing in front of people, people I don't know. Um, so prayed long and hard. I remember I was actually, I was pretty new to the church also when all of, you know, I started making this transition. Um, and I did it. I got the job and I just, I, it was crazy. I couldn't believe that my dreams were becoming a reality. Um, I remember during orientation, orientation is also a very long process because you have to be oriented not only to, you do interfacility transports where you pick a patient up from one hospital who's very sick and you bring it to um, UVA or Fairfax, wherever hospital has the open beds. Um, and that, that part wasn't as scary for me because being a nurse, you know, I'm used to the hospital scene. But what we also do is we also do trauma. We do car accidents, um, heart attacks, strokes, anything. And um, I was only an EMT, I was never a paramedic. And so not having the experience of a paramedic, that's why um, your partner is so valuable to you. My partner is a medic. And so just landing on scene calls was just always a little more nerve wracking for me because um, I didn't have the experience there that I did have in the hospital. So the orientation process gets you through that and it gets you through all age groups too. Like you're oriented from babies to older adults to OB um, to neuro, everything. You have to, you just, you go to where they call you and you have to be able to perform. Um, but a lot of prayer got me through it and um, I'm still nervous every single day that I go to work because you just never know what kind of call you're going to get and you just want to make sure that you're capable of providing the care that the patient needs from you. Um, but every single day I say a little prayer um, before the tones even go off that I'll be able, uh, I ask God to bless my hands and my mind for the knowledge that I need and my hands for the skills that they need to be able to provide for my patients. Um, and I, I just know every time before we land on the helipad at UVA, I always watched people down in the parking lot taking videos and I was just that person down there before. Um, and I just can't believe that now I'm the one actually in the aircraft looking down at those people living out my dream. So, but God gets me through it every single day, every single shift. I couldn't do it without him. And I couldn't do it without the church either, praying for me. And that's probably what got me through the interview because it was so grueling. Uh, but I did it. And here I am.